Hey guys, welcome back to Indulge with Dimples. I want to say a big thank you to all the new subscribers. I am so blessed to have y'all watching me. I never thought no one was going to like really be interested in looking at my videos, but it's something I like to do and it's fun and I get to share the knowledge and the wealth that I have. Woohoo! So once I get to 500 subscribers, I'm going to be back on here with a special, special, special gift for the 500 people that have subscribed to me. For now, let's get into this video. I am featuring from the Garden Tomatoes. Last two weeks, I did zucchini. Bum, I love zucchini. If you love zucchini and you didn't have an idea what to do with your leftover zucchini, <coughs> you need to watch that video, especially that bread. That bread was bum. So, also, I'm doing tomatoes this week, which if you clicked on this video, you're ready for the four meals I got going on, and they are delicious. Now, that um, tomato pie, never made it, got off of Pinterest. It was the bum. I'm going to make that again. I ate that. And realized that I should have made two pies instead of one. So let's get into this video. Hope you like. Thank you everybody that has been a part of the notification crew. And has subscribed to Indulge with Dimples. We are in part of this crew together. If you ever want to make something and you kind of don't know how to make it. Or you want to see if I can make it for you before you make it. I'm going to do so as well. And I'm never going to lie to you about a recipe. If I don't like it, I'm going to let you know I don't like it. And if I love it, I'm going to put it back on and redo it again. So... Follow me in the kitchen and let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm going to be showing you how to make meals with the garden. And this week I'm going to be showing you our favorite friend and guest, which is tomatoes. So I have a lot of tomatoes right here. I have a couple other tomatoes right here that are just plump and juicy. And I even have some of these Roman, oh, well not Roman, they little cherry tomatoes. So we got like three or four different types of tomatoes. So this week I'm going to show you how to make meals with the garden featuring tomatoes. So what we're going to do is make a healthy choice, which is spaghetti. And I'm going to give you the rundown of the items that I'm using for meal one. So I'm trying to eat less red meat, be more healthy, choose less meat. So meatless ground. Um, this company really has some good um, options for meatless food and it's in the vegetarian aisle. I picked this up at Kroger's if you have a Kroger's in your neighborhood and it's really good to use this. So if you like, go ahead and try this out and see if, if this is something that you're interested in. Tastes really good. I like it. We're going to go ahead and use some of this Hunt's um, spaghetti sauce to forward cheese because I love cheese. I have right here some onions and some bell peppers cut up. We're going to put in our spaghetti. Use a real good oil, olive oil, which I have over there in the stove. Yeah, I know this is semi-homemade, semi-store-bought. So, we have our thick and zesty spaghetti sauce mixture. This is going to really help boost up the flavor. And we're going to put like some peppers in here. I'm going to cut up a pepper, put in here. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to dice some of these cherries roman and some of these freshly garden ones and we're going to put in our spaghetti and guess what i'm going to show you what i'm going to use for the noodles later so stay tuned and let's get to cooking okay first thing first we got a pot and i'm going to use some olive oil right here and i'm just going to put a little bit at the bottom of our pot make sure it's on medium high because we're going to steam our vegetables first so the bell pepper, the pepper, and the onions we're going to throw in here. And this is just a meal for two. So if you're cooking for more than two, go ahead and add as much as you want. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of Himalayan salt in here. And I'm going to sweat these vegetables down. Put a lid on it. Come back to it once you get sweat down. Now while that's going on, I'm going to cut up one of these garden tomatoes. I love tomatoes. About two or three Roman tomatoes. And I'm gonna keep whole some cherry tomatoes in our spaghetti because that's just how I like it. I like it chunky. I like to see the tomatoes in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these up. And midway, I'm gonna throw all these tomatoes in there, okay? Then after midway, I'm going to go ahead and season it up with some Italian seasoning, some garlic powder, some onion powder because I want to add a little bit more flavor. And then I'm going to throw in our meat. 
The meat does not take that long to cook, so any type of meat, ground beef, you want to cook that longer. But this right here does not need that much time cooking, and then I'm going to go ahead and add in our seasoning, our special seasoning. And when I come back, I'm going to show you what we're going to use for our meat. medium high we added the tomatoes we had the onion the bell pepper the pepper and all our good seasoning that you would normally add to your spaghetti at this point I'm going to open a can of spaghetti sauce and add in here but before you add the spaghetti sauce in here if you wanted to make your own sauce or you wanted to make your own type of situation your own canister, canister um, this is the base of what you would use to start making it do it down to make your own spaghetti sauce if you wanted to. You would just like to keep stewing down. Add some um, chicken broth or some vegetable broth. Take that back. Vegetable broth. Stew it down. And you can get a really good stew sauce soup out of this. Um, this is the base for a lot of things if you want to make it. But we're making spaghetti healthy version. So I'm going to let this cook down and then I'm going to add the can of spaghetti sauce here and then after I add this can of spaghetti sauce I'm going to add our seasoning pack right here and then I'm going to add the meat in the last minute so all the flavors can come together I wish you could smell it because it smells so delicious all right guys so we're about to finish off our healthy meal of the day number one so I'm about to open this up and add this um spaghetti seasoning pack in here it's going to make this thick I have it in boiling. It has my rough, all my tomatoes in there. One can of tomato sauce, and it's simmering, and everything tastes good. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this pack over it. Now you can add half of this pack, um, or the whole pack. I'm gonna add half of it because normally, if I was making an original pot just for like six to eight people, I would add that whole thing in there with like four cans of sauce. So I don't think I need that much seasoning. I added my own seasoning in here. And you want to go ahead and just taste it to make sure all the flavors are where they should be. Okay? So before I add the meat in there, I'm going to show you what the meat looks like. The meatless meat that I was talking about. So this is what we're going to add in there. We're going to add two cups. One cup, I think. Yeah, one cup is 100 calories per person. But I'm going to show you what it looks like. Because it actually looks like ground beef. And if you're trying to uh, feed your family healthier or just take the journey of a healthier lifestyle, your family aren't even going to know this. Especially if they're not reading and you're the cook in the house, they're not going to know this is not real meat. But look how it looks. I'm going to give you a close up. Look like real ground beef to me. They ain't going to know. So go ahead and just add this in there. Cut your pot down a little bit so it won't boil or pop on you because this is popping. I'm just going to add that in here. And I'm going to add a little bit more seasoning, but you go ahead and add whatever seasoning that you need to make it flavorful and it's up to your taste or standard. And I'm going to add a little bit of this in there. Because, you know, I just have to. I just got to be extra. Okay. And I'm going to add a little more Italian seasoning. I love flavor. Flavor. Flavor town. Here I come. I'm going to stir this up. Let the meat get its flavor in here with the sauce. Put the lid back on here. And then I'm going to show you how I'm even making this a better meal. Because it's from the garden. Everything we're using is from the garden. Okay? Nothing is not from the garden. I mean nothing. Not even that meat that look like meat. It's not. So, let me show you what we want to use for our noodles. Zucchini! So this zucchini, I had a couple more zucchinis left, and I was like, why not make zoodles, noodles, zoodle noodles, I think that's what it's called. So we're going to use this zucchini. And I actually went ahead and grinded up a zucchini that I already had. If you have an electric one or the uh, spinner, go ahead, and go, go ahead and use that. But this right here is like $5.99. You can find this like at Home Goods, um, at Home, Home Goods. 
Kroger's, Myers, Walmart, right where all them places shop Target. They have just a simple one like this, and they have a thin side and a thick side. And I'm using the thick side. And all you do is you just take it, stick it in there, and you just twirl it around, and it comes out like noodles. Be very careful because you do not want to catch a nail or your finger in there because that's a bad boy. And then when you get done, it come out looking like screen noodles. Now you can cook these, but since they're so fresh and my sauce is going to be so hot, I'm going to put the noodles in the bottom of my bowl and then put my sauce on top so we don't have to worry about all the extra stuff. And pretty much that's what I did right here with this bowl. I have my noodles at the bottom. I'm going to give this one more good stare. I'm going to cut it down to a medium low instead of medium high. Make sure all your flavors is there. And then when I come back, I'm going to assemble my dinner. And we're going to be ready to eat. Alright guys, so we are ready to assemble our healthy garden meal. It is boiling, it's cooking, it's smelling good. The meat is in here. The tomatoes have stewed down. Our zucchini noodles are in our bowl. So all I'm going to do is just take this and give me a nice scoop. Put it on top of my zoodle noodles. Okay. Bam. Here we go. Let me scoot this back so I can get the real deal. See how that's smoking? And I'm going to go ahead and put some of this sprinkled cheese on top. like so and another little easy trick while you're cooking on the stove top of one pot meal go ahead and put your garlic bread in the um, air fryer and voila look at that bread it's toasty it's not burnt okay it's not burnt it's just the cheese on top mm. bam voila all right, I see after meal number two featuring tomatoes. All right, guys, so this is meal number two from the garden, and today I have a layout right here, and I'm going to show you and tell you everything that we're going to use. This meal is going to be quick and easy. If you're trying to keep track of a healthy lifestyle, lose some weight, maintain a healthy style, or start a healthy lifestyle, this is where you at. So meal two from the garden. We have some Roman tomatoes. If you looked at meal one, I told you the three types of tomatoes that we're going to be using. Today is Roman. Zucchini is coming back. I have a bunch of zucchini still, so we're going to do some zucchini. I have some red onions. I have some hummus. If you are not a fan of hummus, try this recipe. You're going to like it because it's got cheese, spinach, and hummus in there. So hummus is really good. You can use it in different types of ways and variations. I have a bag of spinach right here. Or you can use kale. Kale's a little more... It can take a pack or a punch. It got a more crunch to it. I'm using mozzarella cheese. You can use Gouda cheese, smoked cheese, whatever cheese you like. But I got mozzarella. And I also always show you the two types of wraps I'm using. So this is real friendly low carb. They have different types. This is five net carbs. They have one that's three and one's four. Um, they range from six to three. But I like this one because it's whole wheat and I got some recipes. So I'm going to use this one. As well, if you are more of a calorie type person, this is 90 calories, it's a big wrap, and this is really flavorful and good. You get this at ID, so either wrap you can use. Now, I was trying to be fancy today, um, and I took out the mandolin. Okay, the mandolin is over here. If you have never used the mandolin, a mandolin, I want you to make sure that you have the safety guard on and that you don't let kids use it. Teenagers can use it, but make sure you have the safety guard on. So, I actually started out with, ooh, come on, ooh, ooh, the nail got caught. Okay, so I started out with the big mandolin, and the big mandolin is going to give you slices like this, okay? This is good if you're going to do like all grout potatoes, or you're going to do some type of casserole. I will be using these, and I'll be showing you a casserole we're going to be making. So, that is the big mandolin. So I went ahead and I got the smaller one because I wanted ribbon type situation. So this is the smaller mandolin. And when I say the safety guard, this is the safety guard. It has the little um, the little clutches at the end you put on there and you just choop, 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 keep going. That is the best way to use that. If you do not use the mandolin with the safety guard, ooh, you are a good one. So using the small one, you actually have like really see-through type 
ribbons and this is the type of cut that I want for our wraps because you don't want it too bulky like this because this is pretty bulky and it's going to take a minute but if you cut them a little thinner like ribbons when I say ribbons because look they can just actually fold like ribbons um it doesn't take that long you got a nice crunch still and it really flavorful so we have our whole layout and we use a mandolin, but if you don't have a mandolin, use a regular knife and a cutting board and cut them as thin as you can. I'm going to actually hand cut these tomatoes because I didn't want to put in the mandolin because they're not quite firm, but they're not like juicy like, oh my god, we can't use these. And we're just going to use salt and pepper, so we're going to move over to our skillet and get to cooking. Alright, so I'm being fancy with y'all today. I have a cast iron skillet. I have it on medium. I'm going to turn it up. So, trick number one. And owning a cast iron skillet what you want to do is make sure you season the cast iron skillet so it doesn't rust and all you're gonna do is get some high quality olive oil you're gonna stick this cast iron in the oven on blazing hot take it out you want to get you a little paper towel with a little oil on it and just rub it around there so it won't rust if you don't know now you know anything that's cast iron you want to do this because it's going to keep it nice and fresh and new um if it ever rusts you can restore it back by doing that but it's a lot of elbow grease goes involved so first thing first you want to get this really nice and hot and i'm going to use a little bit of butter spray butter which is going to give us some flavor like so and i'm going to layer our zucchini on here so we can get a nice grill and that's the only thing that's actually going to get cooked so you just want to put these zucchini on there let them cook for a few seconds and then you want to turn around take them out and let them sit depending on how big your wrap is that is how um, many you want to put in there just put a little bit of salt and pepper on top if you want you can add extra seasonings but I'm not And then go ahead and slice up your tomatoes. And I'm going to show you how to assemble this after the zucchini get really nice. So you just want to flip it and do the same on the other side. So we flipped them and seasoned them on both sides. They are looking fantastic. I'm going to do is just take them off right now. And put them on our cutting board. Woo! I'm going to do a couple more. Then it's going to be time to finish our wrap. Alright guys, so we're done grilling our zucchini, which is over here. Really nice. It doesn't take that long. I'm going to use the 90 calorie flat bread. And all I'm going to do is just put a little spray of butter on there. And then I'm going to put the wrap down. Just like so. <clears throat> and now we're going to start assembling it. So, I have the hummus right here. And I'm going to put hummus on one side of the wrap. And get the hummus that you like. So about a tablespoon or two. Depending on how much hummus you like. I got a big tablespoon. So just this one is going to work. Okay. Don't go too close to the edge. Because when we fold this. You don't want it to spill out. So about that much hummus. Then you want to go ahead and get you two slices of cheese. Depending on what kind of cheese you bought. And I have it right here. And I'm just going to put the cheese down. Like so. So you can put as much cheese as you like if you want it really cheesy or not. Up to you. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my zucchini on here. So I'm going to put three on one side. Like so. And I actually hand sliced our tomatoes. 
So all I'm going to do is just go ahead and break them off. If you have mushrooms, you can put in here. If you want to do um, like bell pepper, you can do that as well. And I'm just going to layer these tomatoes in here. I didn't want them too small, but I didn't want them too big. And I'm just going to put a little bit of salt on the tomatoes. Going to bring out some flavor. And then my onions from earlier. Throw that on here like so. This is going to be really good. Put the rest of our zucchini on here. Go ahead and add your last cheese. And then I'm going to take it. Get another tablespoon of hummus. And put it on this side. Fold it up. Okay. And if you have like a little spatula or something. Now, this doesn't take that long to cook. What you really want is just make sure the other side of the tortilla or the flatbread, whatever you use it, is crispy and the cheese is melting. Once that is completely done on one side, I want to say about a minute and a half or two, you just want to go ahead and flip it on the other side. Um, you can use a um, cast iron skillet with the grill marks or you can just use the plain one like I'm using. And then when we get done, we're going to dress it up and put it on the plate. And I actually can hear the cheese melting. So that's how you know you're doing a good job. So let it cook for a few minutes. Guys, I forgot to put the spinach in there. So let's go ahead and open it up before we flip it. And put some spinach in here. Or kale, whatever you choose to use. Crazy me. And then just, just fold it back. Let it cook. Oh, look at that, y'all. Let it cook for a few more minutes, and it's going to be done. Alright, so this is the low-carb tortilla, and I'm just going to repeat everything I did with the other flatbread. This one, we'll cut it down a little bit because it's cooking really hot. I love this salt. Some spinach. Or again, you can use kale. It's really up to you. And we're going to do a reverse peak. Repeat on here. over check the other side to make sure it's not burning up and then you should be good to go but while that one is cooking I just really want to show y'all how it came out so I made one for the kiddos with cheese in it they're gonna love it but the real showcase stopper is this one so look at it it is looking delicious so you can see all the layers in here it's really good it's healthy and um, you're gonna really like it I'm gonna give it a taste Mm. really good really healthy meal number two and if you like it try it and if you try it leave me a comment down below all right guys so welcome to meal three of our featuring friend tomatoes so i'm gonna make a crustless tomato pie if you never had one you're gonna like it. you're gonna enjoy it especially if you love cheese so I'm going to give you the rundown of what you need for this recipe and then we're going to get right into making it. So you need a pan, a pie pan. I'm going to have a pie dish pan right here. It's 9 by 1.4 inches and it is, um, what's that called when you can just scoop it on out? I forgot. Not stainless steel, but um, you know what I'm saying. So I have a pie crust pan right here. 
Um, I have some bay leaf fresh right here and mixed with dill because I love dill. You're going to need some tomatoes. We're going to slice the tomatoes up like this. You're going to need about three to four of them depending on how big your pie crust pan is. And I'm going to show you how to do that right here. You need two eggs. You're going to need some sodded butter. You're going to need two tablespoons of that. You're going to need some salt, some onions, some garlic, and mozzarella. So you can use the shredded mozzarella, which is two cups measured out. Or you can use the um, mozzarella like this that is in squares. And you're probably going to need the whole pack. So either or really doesn't matter. So first thing first, you're going to go ahead and get you any type of onion that you like. I have a red onion right here, and I'm going to um, dice up some more of it and then I'm going to put it in my pan with a little butter that's what the butter is for and I'm going to let it get translucent and then I'm going to add in some seasonings to it like a little bit of salt while that is cooking I'm going to go ahead and show you how we're going to dice our tomatoes to make this pie you know what type of onions you have and how much onions you like in your pie you're really not going to taste it and if you have some fresh garlic you want to go ahead and midway when the onions are cooking throw it in and finish cooking it off with your onions. Now you're going to need salt and pepper for this. Um, besides that you're not going to need too much of anything else. So I have a tomato right here, a Roman tomato. And let me just move some stuff out the way so you can see. I have a Roman tomato right here and all I'm going to do is just cut the ends off really thin because we don't need the ends at this point but I'm going to use them for a different recipe. And then I'm going to go ahead and slice these tomatoes up. So I have one already sliced up. And you can slice it as thick or thin as you want. You don't want it too thin and you don't want it too thick. <clears throat> Make sure you are being careful when you're cutting these so you won't cut your fingers off. So this is about the thickness that I have mine. And I'm going to do is just take it and put it in a bowl. It doesn't matter. And make sure you fan them out. Put them in the bowl. And just sprinkle a little bit of salt. So that salt can draw out the water. Because you want to make sure you get as much water as possible out of the tomatoes. And just set them aside. While that is going on, you're going to go ahead and get you some dill and some parsley. If you have it fresh and you just want to chop some of it up and if it's not fresh you can get the dill and parsley that is in the shaker and you can add it to your mixture in a minute all right guys so right now i have the oven preheating on 350 we're about to put this crustless tomato pie together so i finished up let me get y'all together so i finished up the onions they caramelized i didn't burn them anything they have the fresh um, garlic in here with the onion and I just cooked it down in a little bit of butter so next thing you're gonna need is your bow you need two eggs and you want to go ahead and crack your eggs keep the shells out of them please and to this you want to add your two cups of mozzarella cheese and that's the cheese right here we're gonna add in and then you want to add your fresh dill not fresh dill but your fresh um, basil and I have a little bit of dill in here as well so we're going to add that to the bowl. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. I'm going to whisk this together and if you're anything like me and you love your garlic I have some garlic powder right here do not use garlic salt because we uncooked the onions and the garlic and garlic and the butter that has the salt to it so everything now just needs to be powder form so we're watching our salt intake all right so I have like a little bit left of cheese right here I'm gonna finish using that one first and then I'm gonna go ahead and mix that in here and I'm going to go ahead and mix a little bit more of our cheese in here. So it's going to get very thick. Our mixture. And I'm going to add a little bit more of our pepper. And I have some basil. And I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of basil in here as well. Doo -doo. 
maybe not. Yeah, I'm going to sprinkle a little more basil, dry basil in here. Alright. So mix this up really, really good, like so. And you're going to get a nice little combo. It shouldn't be runny, but it should be like a really thick consistency. And then I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. So we have our mixture of our eggs and cheese and seasoning. Then we have our fresh garlic and onions over here. I'm going to go ahead and get our pan out right here. And I'm going to spread with just a little bit of butter. Or you can use some of the butter and roll it in the pan. But I'm just going to spray butter in here. I'm going to get our tomatoes that we have been sitting on the side and I'm going to pay, take a paper towel and just damp it and at the bottom of the bowl you can tell that the juice has actually um, some juice have came off of the tomatoes hopefully you can see that and we're just going to damp it a little bit and I'm going to do at this point is start assembling our crustless tomato pot so you want to go ahead and take your tomatoes and set them at the bottom. And you just heard my oven go off. So we have it preheated at 350. This is going to take about 25 to 30 minutes to cook. But you just want to go ahead and put your tomatoes at the bottom of your pan. Arrange them like so. If you use a deeper pan, you might want to double up on your tomatoes and your pie filling but we're gonna see and I think I have enough to go around yep got enough to go around all right have you never tried this before it is a vegetarian not a vegan because vegans can't eat like eggs and stuff like that but it's a good vegetarian meal it will get you full especially if you love tomatoes this is definitely a meal that you want to try out alright so then I'm gonna go ahead and take my caramel onions and garlic and I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that everywhere a little bit goes a long way so we didn't really have to chop up a full onion we did like a quarter of an onion Don't leave nothing out. Okay, the countertop is clean. I always bleach stuff down, so don't worry. This is smelling good already. So, next thing, you want to take your mixture of your cheese and eggs. And you want to go ahead and just pour this in the pan. You might want to start in the middle and just work your way out and around. Like you would do a cake. Now if your pan is deeper or if you have a wider pan, you might want to add a little bit more cheese, a little bit more of an egg, of that nature, so that um, you're actually covering up the pie or the tomatoes. So yeah. And I think we did a marvelous job, okay? So this is going to come out really golden, cheesy, crispy on top all right this takes about 25 to 30 minutes you want to pop this in the oven and when it's done it's going to come out crispy on top and golden brown and then we're going to cut into it after the rest and i'm going to show you what this looks like all right guys so we are done um if you watched earlier i made the tomato salad really really good but I also made pizza today and this is really really hot and it just came out the oven. So I'm going to let it cool off and sit but this is how you know that it's done. Um, look at that golden brown and if you could smell this it smells oh it just smell like butter and heaven and everything in between. So <laughs> this is what you really want it to look like it's golden brown really delicious on top when we let it sit and cool when we cut into it. It's going to be delicious. Hopefully you like this. And um, 
we're gonna move on to meal four all right guys see you then hey guys welcome back to our last and final meal meal number four today we are going to be doing a tomato salad it's simple it's easy it's very healthy it's a side or if you like me and you love salads you can eat this by itself add a couple more items and boom bada bing you got a whole meal but it's just going to be presented to you as a side and if you choose to further it more go ahead do that leave your comments dialogue down below and um, I will read them and get back to you. So let's get into it. Let me tell you the ingredients that we need. And then we're going to jump right into making this tomato salad. So yeah, I know our favorite guest this week has been tomatoes. We're going to be using Roman tomatoes. We're going to get these bad boys out of my kitchen because I'm tired of them. We're going to need some salt. We're going to need some pepper. We're going to need some extra um, virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil is good for doing salad dressings and things of that nature. It actually tells you on the bottle. So if you ever get confused and you're like, do I use olive oil, extra olive virgin oil? It tells you on the bottle. And then some um, red wine vinegar. Some people like using the regular vinegar, but the red wine vinegar gives it like a little sweet tang. It's like a umami sensation. And then we have some fresh parsley. It's a lot from the bag, which is my favorite besides dill. And we have a red onion back here. So what you're going to need to make this nice little mixture, we're going to go ahead, oh, and our guest today as well is a mandolin. If you don't have a mandolin, it's cool. If you have a steady hand or if you can really get down and cut a tomato really, really thin, be my guest and go ahead and do so. But I'm going to use a mandolin because I want these tomato slices to be really, really thin. So um, I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to switch out the blade that I have right here, which is like a thick size. And I'm going to go ahead and find my thin one, which is this one right here. And I'm going to put it in the mandolin, switch it out. And I'm actually going to use that to cut up my onions. So, if you are really good at it, you can just take it and you just go down the blade and slice it. When it gets to a certain point, you actually want to go ahead and use the safety guard device that comes with it and stick your safety guard device on here and get the slicing. That is the best tool you're going to have for this project. Okay, when you get done, they're thinly sliced. So you want your onions as thin as possible for this salad. If you can get them this thin, hand chopping you are a beast in my sake but I don't have that packed down yet so I think I have a good amount of onions on here so I have them sliced up I'm gonna go ahead and roughly dice my tomatoes they don't have to be very um, petite they can be roughly diced you can make them whatever size you choose to eat your tomatoes if you want them big and chunky go ahead if you want them thin that is no problem as well and these are some juicy Roman tomatoes So, I have my onions and my tomatoes diced. I'm going to go ahead and throw it in my bowl right here. So, I diced the onions and sliced the... I diced the tomatoes and sliced the onions. And next thing, I'm going to go ahead and take some fresh herbs. And I'm just going to get a handful and chop them up. Roughly chop them up. I think fresh herbs is just more appealing when you're cooking like salads or anything because it gives that fresh 
aroma and it's light and it's airy. So make sure you go ahead and wash these prior to and then you want to go ahead and chop them up. Alright, so go ahead and give these a rough chop. This bundle them all up and roughly chop them. You just go ahead and throw it in your bowl. I don't want it to be chopped up so much that it doesn't have any definition. You really don't know what's going on. So that's why I said give it a rough chop. And then next, you want to go ahead and get you a spoon or spatula, and you just want to mix this all around. These onions are beautiful. I might just cut some more tomatoes up. Alright, so now we want to make our dressing or vinaigrette for this. So get you a nice little bowl. And you want to put the equal amount of parts of vinegar and oil in here, or two to one ratio and I'm going to eyeball this and you can make this as taste so taste it if you feel like you need to add a little bit more add more if you feel like you need to add less add less it's really up to you I'm going to add a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt in here and I tell you this recipe is like super super easy to make Get your whisk and whisk away. Now before you put it on there, give it a nice little taste. And you can go ahead and drizzle it on top. I don't want to drizzle too much on top, just a nice amount. And then I just want to stir it in here like so. And guess what? You have a nice little salad. So this is a really good salad to end off summer with, uh, to begin fall with, to use all your vegetables. If you have some cucumbers, you can add it in here. If you want to make this a full blown meal, go ahead and add some more stuff in here. But look how easy and simple and beautiful that is. Alright guys, until next time, please like, share, subscribe. I want to say thank you to all of the new people to the crew. I appreciate the dialogue. I appreciate you sharing. I appreciate you thumbsing it up. And if you feel like you have a request, you want me to cook something that you're not quite sure if you want or if you're not sure how to make it, um, leave it down below. I will get back to you. And until next time, I will see you next Sunday. Love to everyone.